What's up everybody, Ben here with Fly Plugins and today I'm going to answer a question that we commonly get from our customers and uh, usually comes in in a pre-sale question um, and the question is this, what's the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org? Which one do I need? Which one do I use? Which one's better? And so I'm going to answer that question in today's video. Coming up. Okay, so the main difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org is simply this. WordPress.com is a hosted solution. It's a, it's a SaaS or software as a service solution. And WordPress.org is a self-hosted solution. So in other words, uh, if you wanted to run uh, WordPress.org, you would actually go to WordPress.org, you would download WordPress, it would download in a zip file, and then you would upload those files via FTP to your own web server. And then you would have to configure them, create your database, etc. With WordPress.com, you simply go to their website and you sign up. You can get a free website, which sounds good, but I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. And basically, you're off to the races. There's no configuration. There's no downloading or FTPing or any of that. So right out the gate, it really sounds like WordPress.com is better than WordPress.org. However, I'm going to go through some of the pros and cons of each. And at the very end, you get to decide what's best for you. So let's go ahead and let's just jump right in. I'm going to talk about WordPress.org first. Okay. As I mentioned before, WordPress.org is a self-hosted solution where you download uh, the files. And so the interesting thing about that is that WordPress.org is, is open source. It's an open source software, uh, which means you can actually look at the code and, and, and you can even manipulate it because it's licensed under what they call GPL or general public license. So you can manipulate, you can change, you can even redistribute WordPress if you choose to. Um, I don't recommend uh, modifying WordPress if you're going to use it. Um, and the only reason for that is WordPress has a lot of uh, developer friendly action hooks and filters that you can utilize to uh, manipulate and do things with WordPress. So unless you really know what you're doing, I don't recommend that. Anyway, that's, that's a discussion for another video. The other cool thing about WordPress.org is it's free. You can download it for free, use it as much as you want, install it on as many web servers as you want, have as many WordPress websites as you want, um, all because it's free. So one of the, the, the main cool things about WordPress.org is that you get to use the theme of your choice. Okay, you can use a free theme, a premium theme, or even a custom theme. If you write themes, if you're a developer and you write themes, you can create your theme and upload it and utilize that on your WordPress.org uh, self-hosted installation. Now, the other cool thing about it that's kind of related to that is that you can utilize free or premium plugins or even custom plugins. Again, you can write and create your own plugin, upload it, and utilize it. So, yeah, WordPress.org uh, really has a lot of flexibility so that you can basically install and utilize it uh, any which way you choose. Okay, so another uh, cool feature about WordPress.org self-hosted installation is that you actually own your site. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you sign up for a hosted solution, for example, like WordPress.com, and this goes for any hosted solution, you are agreeing to their terms of service, which means that you are restricted to what they tell you, you can util how you can utilize that service. Uh, in other words, like for example, um, let's just say you wanted to post certain content that violates that terms of service. Well, if, if it violates the terms of service, they can shut down your website. Okay, they don't have to ask you, they can just do it. Now, pending something illegal, you can pretty much have free reign on your self-hosted installation of WordPress and you can post content, any which content, whichever content you'd like to post um, and utilize that WordPress installation however you see fit. Okay, you don't have to abide by any terms of service. Again, pending something illegal, you have complete free reign and total control of your website. So another cool thing about uh, the self-hosted installation is that you can monetize it 
however you wish okay you can monetize it by adding Google AdWords you can you can add um, you know if you're you're an affiliate with say uh, somebody like Bluehost you can put Bluehost ads you can put any type of ads that you like onto your website and monetize it any which way you choose and and that revenue that's, gen that's generated uh, it goes to you uh, pending the the uh, the percentage of commission that you get or that you agree to um, but the other cool thing about the self-hosted install is that you can run a full e-commerce website so let's just say you have an online store you're selling maybe digital goods maybe you're selling online courses with wp courseware uh, or maybe you're just selling uh, tangible goods like coffee mugs um, you can do all of that from your self-hosted installation of wordpress um, and the last cool thing about about the self-hosted install, and there's actually a lot more, but these are just kind of the, the highlights, um, is that you can use Google Analytics. What's Google Analytics? Google Analytics is basically, um, it's, it's a service that Google provides, it's a free service that you can use, um, and it, what it does is it tracks um, traffic on your website, okay? It collects all this data about the traffic that you get to your website. So that you can analyze it and make your site better so that you can you can target a certain market so you may have heard of seo or search engine optimization well google analytics plays a big role in how you um, optimize your website for search engines so google analytics is a plus there's a there's a ton of uh, free plugins that you can install that help with google analytics and so anyway, that's, that's pretty much the crux of WordPress.org and all the benefits of WordPress.org. Now I had trouble coming up with some of the negative aspects of the self-hosted installation. I came up with a couple, although I don't think they're terrible. Okay, so the first uh, negative aspect for uh, WordPress.org self-installation is that you are required to do all of your maintenance. What do I mean by that? Well, just like anything else, maybe you have a mobile phone and you get uh, operating system updates as well as app updates. Well, WordPress is very similar to that. WordPress gets updates um, and you know it's, it's to take care of security flaws or maybe there's a bug in WordPress. And so those are all distributed out and pushed out via update. You also have to update your themes, your plugins. And the cool thing about it though is that it's, it's as easy as clicking a few buttons and you can update your WordPress website. It's not very difficult. It's almost, it's very similar to updating your, your mobile phone or your smartphone. Uh, you just click a couple of, of buttons and you've got your updates all done. So the other part of maintenance is backing up your site. I highly recommend that you back up your site. Now, in what, why do I recommend this? Well, uh, <laughs> It, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, it, you could have a server failure. Uh, maybe something happens and that, that hard drive is wiped out. Well, you, you wanna make sure you have a backup of your website so that you can get it back up and running as soon as possible. Maybe you have to go to a new host and, and transfer that backup over to a new host and you can have your site up and running fairly quickly. But I highly recommend a backup solution. They have plugins available. There. I think there are some free ones on the wordpress.org uh, repository but there's also premium plugins uh, such as uh, backup buddy backup buddies by iThemes and it's a very good um, plugin we've used that in the past uh, i do recommend it now there'll be some some instances where your hosting company actually does this for you for example uh, we we host all of our websites on wp engine and wp engine does a great job with backups they back up our site daily i can force a backup if i want to um, but they take care of all of the, the backups for us so that we don't even have to worry about it. So it's a really cool uh, hosting solution. I highly recommend it. So that's pretty much all of the negative aspects that I could find, and, and although I don't really even think they're so negative. Okay, so now let's talk about WordPress.com. Now, WordPress.com, as I mentioned earlier, is a software as a service. So it is a service, so you do have to pay for it although they do have a free option uh, to create a blog. Um, how is that free? Well, the reason it's free is because WordPress.com places ads on your website, although you don't benefit from that revenue 
All that revenue goes to WordPress.com, hence you have your free website. But they have uh, several other plans as well. They have a personal premium and a business plan. Now, each pricing tier has different features. I'm going to I'm just going to focus on the free uh, tier as well as the personal tier. The personal tier actually runs about uh, close to $50 per year. And the reason I'm, I'm focusing on that one is because that's likely what you're going to pay for hosting if you if you went wordpress.org self install solution with the with the personal plan uh, you have some really cool features uh, you can actually have a custom domain the custom domain is not available if you're using the free website option um, but with the personal plan you can you can have a custom domain name another cool thing about the custom about the personal plan is that they actually remove those ads so they're not pushing out uh, ads on the website if like as if you were using uh, the free option. So the other the other thing with uh, the various pricing tiers with WordPress.com is you also are limited to storage space. So for example, with the personal plan, you're limited to six gigabytes. And I think with the premium, it's I want to say like something like 13 gigabyte. And when you move up to the business plan, it's it's unlimited. Um, so so those those are kind of the highlights. Of, of the, the various plans that WordPress.com offers. So what are, what are some of the, the positive aspects, some of the pros uh, to WordPress.com? Well, un unfortunately, I can only think of a couple. Um, and the first one is, well, you can get a free site. Uh, again, the free site comes with caveats like they put their own ads on there. But hey, free is free, right? Okay, so the other cool thing is that WordPress.com takes care of all the maintenance. If you remember, I was talking a lot about maintenance with WordPress.org. WordPress.com does all the heavy lifting. They take care of the maintenance so that you don't have to. So those are the two of the, of the primary positive aspects uh, for WordPress.com. Now I'm gonna shift over to some of the negative aspects, okay? So again, with, with the free option, you get ads and it's forced on there. You don't have an option to turn it off unless you upgrade to the personal plan. And every tier above that, obviously, uh, you, you can turn the ads off for that, that as well. With the personal plan, custom themes are not allowed. You, you can't upload a premium or a custom theme. Uh, if you find a really cool theme out on the internet, you can't use it. Uh, the same goes for plugins. If you have a custom or premium plugin, uh, you cannot install that with the personal plan, okay? Now, I believe when you get all the way up to the business plan, you can install custom themes and custom plugins. But then again, you'll be paying $300 a year for hosting for that. So not sure if that's a viable option for you. So the other uh, kind of a negative aspect is that uh, WordPress.com does not allow Google Analytics uh, until you get to the business tier. So if you have a personal or premium plan or free plan, uh, you cannot use Google Analytics. Now, in all fairness, um, WordPress.com does provide statistics for your website. However, I prefer uh, Google Analytics because, well, they have the largest search engine in the world and they have a lot of data uh, that, we, that we like to tap into. So, so I really highly recommend using Google Analytics. Uh, and, and we use other analytic tools. Um, but Google Analytics is the primary one we use. Uh, the other kind of um, negative aspect, if you're using a personal plan, is you, you can't monetize your site. And so, um, some of you have, you know, some of you want to run Google AdWords. Um, maybe you're an affiliate program. You want to run some kind of ad on your site. Well, you can't do that with the free option or with the personal option. I believe when you get to the premium option. You can monetize your site, but there's a caveat to that too. And I believe it's a special system that WordPress.com has built. So it's not like you're able to just add Google AdWords to your site. So those are kind of the, the negative aspects to having a, a WordPress.com site. Okay, so in summary, if you are a hobby blogger or maybe you have a family blog that you'd like to start, and you're not too worried about monetization or e-commerce or customizing your website, then I would recommend using WordPress.com. Now, if you want to customize your website and add custom themes and custom 
plugins, as well as monetize your site or even run an e-commerce site, I would highly recommend using the wordpress.org self-install for your solution. Um, and, and, and along with that, you may be wondering, because you, you might be in this boat where you already have a wordpress.com site and you're thinking of moving over to the self-hosted solution and you're wondering, is there a way to transfer? And the, the answer to that is absolutely. Uh, WordPress has some really cool tools in it where you can export and import. So all of your content can be moved off of wordpress.com over to a self-hosted installation. Again, I'm not going to uh, make a recommendation one way or another, but now you have an idea of how wordpress.org um, lines up with wordpress.com and you know the differences with the two. And now you have to make a decision as to which option you want to go with that fits your website. Question of the day, which hosting platform are you using and are you happy with them? Post, post your, your hosting solutions down in the comments section. Let me know if you're happy with them, what you liked about them, what you didn't like about them. Um, we love uh, WP Engine. We've used them for years. Another one that we recommend is SiteGround. They seem to be pretty solid. Um, but go ahead and post that down in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a lot more cool videos just like this one, informative videos about WordPress. Um, and, and so I want to make sure that you are going to get all of this cool information from Fly Plugins. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.